guys welcome back to another video and today we'll be taking a look at the latest wheelbase from Mozza. it's the r9 aimed at the mid-range sim racing market competing directly against the Fanatec CSL DD. So I'll be taking a look at the direct drive wheelbase, the GS steering wheel and the CRP pedals. I'll take you through the main features and what it feels like together with how well it performs. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting a bell icon to get notified of my next release. Let's begin by unboxing and taking a look at the wheelbase. In the packaging, you get a user manual, some Mozza racing stickers, USB-B to USB-A cable. You get a cable for the power adapter that has a kettle connector, and there's an inline on-off switch on there. You get a power adapter, and finally the wheelbase, which is inside this fabric bag. Taking a closer look at the wheelbase, this is a direct drive wheelbase, meaning the wheel is mounted directly onto the motor, and all the force feedback details are passed directly onto the wheel giving the best racing experience compared to a belt or gear driven system. It's constructed entirely from aluminium alloy and comes in matte black. It's capable of giving a maximum torque of nine Newton meters. The design is pretty simple and compact with their branding on the front, back and sides. On the front, you have the connection point to attach a wheel and the wheels come with a quick release mechanism, allowing you to quickly switch wheel rims in a matter of seconds, which is definitely one of the best quick releases I've come across so far. You just align the wheel against it and push it into position to lock it into place. And to release, you just pull back on the quick release and pull off, so easy. Underneath you've got four holes to allow you to mount onto a sim cockpit or wheel stand. There's an optional desk clamp mount you can get allowing you to clamp it to a desk. And just to note, there's no side mounting option. Coming around the back, you've got the connection points. So you have a meter input for the digital dash display, an e-stop, USB-B, DC input, and a power button. Personally, I would have preferred if the power button was at the front or at the side of the wheelbase for easy access. And I'm not quite sure why the cable for the power adapter needs the power switch as there's already a button on the wheelbase. The wheelbase is compatible with a PC and has no console support, which is a bit of a shame. Moving on to the GS racing style wheel. In the packaging, you get a user manual and stickers defining different actions. Then you have the wheel, which comes in a material bag and finally a small plastic bag containing an Allen key and some small sticky pads. It's a standard 300 millimeter GS wheel diameter wrapped in Alcantara and constructed from forged carbon fiber. There's an RGB rev counter at the top of the wheel, 10 mechanical keys which are illuminated, five band knobs, two thumb knobs, and two joysticks. There's a lot of customization features available via the Mozza app, which I'll show later. The buttons and dials are ergonomically placed, so everything is in close reach when driving. The grips are perfectly formed with a good feel to them, covered in Alcantara and can be replaced if you want by removing the screws around the grips. Coming around the back, you've got a quick release mechanism with a metallic gold collar, allowing you to swap the wheels in and out in seconds. Then we have the dual clutch paddle shifters made out of three millimeter forged carbon fiber. The top half of the shifters are magnetic, providing quick and precise shifting, while the bottom half are spring loaded, which will give you control of the clutch with a nice feel when you press down and are a comfortable distance away from the wheel. The wheel has a very high quality feel to it with a premium finish, which I'm really impressed with. Taking a look at the CRP pedals in the packaging, you get the pedal mounting plate, a user manual, heel stop plate, a bag of screws, a USB-B to USB-A cable, a bag containing washers, some Allen keys, super lube to keep your pedals operating smoothly. You have a replacement brake spring, two brake bumpers, two spanners, and three bags, one containing a brake pedal, then the accelerator pedal, and finally the clutch pedal. Looking at each of the pedals, they're made from aluminum alloy and look good with a great build quality to each one. The clutch pedal has a three stage clutch, meaning there's three different clutch travel stages. The first stage provides less starting resistance. In the second stage, the resistance sharply increases like a clutch disc spring. And in the third stage, the resistance will drop off. The brake pedal features a high precision load cell, which does feel good. You get a replacement spring in the packaging, allowing you to change from the medium one that's installed to the hard one. You also get two replacement rubber stoppers to change the resistance. You get a hard and soft one, and the medium one is already installed. 
There's connection points on either side, and this is where you'd connect the clutch and accelerator together with the USB-B point where the other end plugs into your PC. And then we have the accelerator with a nice smooth consistent feel to it, and again, a solid build quality. The pedals are adjustable, enabling you to increase or decrease the resistance, and the angle can be moved between 63 degrees to 83 degrees. And the height and positions of the individual pedals can be changed too. However, as this only works on PCs, they're not compatible with any consoles. Setting up the pedals is easy. Take the mount plate and attach the heel stop by screwing down either side. Now we can attach each of the pedals on the plate. I'll start with the accelerator and place into position, lining up with the holes on the plate. Then take a screw, place a washer on there and attach with an Allen key. Next onto the brake, I'll connect the cable from the accelerator first and then line up and screw into position. And finally the clutch. Same thing again, connect the cable and screw onto the plate. And that's it, as simple as that. Coming over to my PC, Mozza have their own software to help customize settings called Mozza Pit House, which you can download from the website the app lets you customize settings for each of the Mozza devices you have connected. So in my case, for the wheelbase, wheel and pedals. If you own a digital dash display, that can also be customized too. The user interface of the app is simple to navigate around. And on the left hand side, you have your main page. And then underneath, you have the devices where you can go in and customize the settings. So for example, on the wheelbase, you can change the amount of force feedback by adjusting the settings here or changing the frequency depending on how much of the track you want to feel in the game. On the steering wheel, you can make changes to the rotation of the wheel, plus change the colors on the rev counter display. For the pedals, you can customize each of the pedals by adjusting the stroke on the accelerator, the brake, and the clutch pedals individually. There's also a mobile app available on both Android and Apple, allowing you to connect to the wheelbase via Bluetooth, giving the same amount of customization, which is really impressive and so convenient. But one thing I didn't like was that you had to register an account with them, which really shouldn't be required. Now I've set up the R9 wheelbase with the GS steering wheel and pedals together with a Fanatec Club Sport shifter on my Simcock bit from Track Racer. This is the TR120 and I'll be using it with my 55 inch LG C1 OLED TV. I've got all the devices connecting to my gaming PC from Alienware. Now the list of PC games supporting force feedback is provided on their website. I've maxed out the force feedback to see how well it performs. So let's jump into a race and see what this feels like. racing experience is really impressive the r9 wheelbase is very quiet as there's no internal fans and after playing for a couple of hours the wheelbase does feel warm but there's no loss of performance or any worry of it overheating it feels really smooth refined and gives a lot of detail from bumps curbs and the track itself the torque levels feel very strong and you can feel the force feedback accurately from the track as you're going around corners so it feels very realistic Moving on to the wheel, it feels incredible. The paddle shifters have an excellent feel to them and I do like the clicky sound coming from them, giving quite a satisfying feel when you're shifting up or down through the gears. The grips are perfectly formed and have a great feel to them, but best to drive with gloves to keep the Alcantara in good condition. The controls on the wheel are easy to reach and there's enough customization on the app to tailor your settings on the buttons and dials. So very impressed with that. The pedals feel good and precise underfoot with not much flex on them. The clutch feels good with the three stage mechanism giving quite a good feeling when using it. I've tested the clutch in conjunction with the Fanatec Club Sport shifter and it works perfectly. The brake pedal with a load cell kit works really well and feels more precise, feeling solid and rigid to give a more realistic braking experience. The accelerator feels smooth and retracts back really well and is perfect when transitioning to the brake pedal. And overall, I'm really impressed with the experience from this. So in summary, I'm really impressed with the Mozza R9 wheelbase, GS steering wheel and the CRP pedals built to a very high standard and coming at a mid-range spectrum of the sim racing market pedals are solid and do feel really good in terms of quality and the overall experience with them is really good. I'm especially impressed with the brake pedal and the load cell sensor. The GS steering wheel is really well made and has an impressive build quality and with the 9 Newton meters of torque from the RS wheelbase 
this does feel incredible. Negatives wise, it's a shame Mozza has limited themselves with a lack of playability on consoles as it's only compatible on a PC. But it would have been great if you could use it on a PlayStation or Xbox. But interestingly enough, there is a company that's created an adapter that allows you to use it on a console but this is not something i've tested out yet so let me know in the comments if you want to get that in and give it a go it would have been nice if you could customize settings directly from the steering wheel without having to go into the app obviously not a biggie as you can flip over mid game or you could make changes using their app on your smartphone and finally the price isn't cheap so with the r9 wheelbase at 439 dollars and the pedals with the gs wheel coming in at 499 dollars each you'll be looking at paying around 1437 dollars compared to the equivalent fanatec bundle which is the dd pro premium bundle which comes with the boost kit taking the torque levels to eight newton meters which is slightly less than moza and load cell kit coming in at 970 dollars which is two thirds the price in comparison to Mozza. This pricing also follows onto their racing wheels as Fanatec's wheels start from $140 going up to an insane $1,500. Whereas the two wheels from Mozza are $499 each. Due to the wheel being so new to the market, games don't automatically work with it. So there is some initial fiddling around just to get the wheel working, which can be annoying initially. However, Mozza's devices do have an incredible build quality and awesome performance when racing. So there you have it, you made it to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below including purchasing links. And let me know in the comments if you want to see a comparison with the Fanatec GTDD Pro against the Mozza R9. And if you're still here, drop a Mozza R9 in the comments as it's nice to see who's made it to the end of my videos. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter. And if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.